We've got Robert Siciliano with us. So Robert, welcome. Thank you so much. Glad you're able to take some time off here and, uh, and you know, help out some of my clients with uh, some security issues they may be dealing with. So are you ready to help rescue some retirements? Let's get her done. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's go through, uh, I guess, start off with some of the more common ways that someone could become a victim of some type of a personal information breach, and then maybe what they could do to better protect themselves from that. Yeah. So um, that's a big question. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. You know, there are, there have been billions of records, our personal identifying information stolen. Named addresses, phone numbers, you know, home phone, you know, mobile phone, email address, which is all personal identifying information. It's not really sensitive information, it's but it's personal to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is a lot of sensitive information that's been compromised too, like social security numbers, uh, account numbers, credit card information, usernames and passcodes. The username itself isn't generally sensitive. But the passcode, of course, is. Mm -hmm. And all of that information has been breached on all of us to a certain degree. Uh, it's out there. I mean, not every single password, not every single account number is in the hands of a bad guy, but a lot of it is. And that's as a result of either your device is insecure or mm -hmm. you've let it out there because you clicked the link in the body of an email and your device got compromised, had malware on it as a result of that. Or a government entity like the um, the Office of uh, Personnel in the federal government, or um, Equifax got breached, and mm -hmm. so as a result of all these data breaches, whether it's local on your device or out there on a government or corporate database, your information is in the hands of criminals. And so, that being said, your responsibility going forward as a result of all of these data breaches, and when I say all of these data breaches, there's been tens of thousands of breaches and billions and billions of records, I would, it's safe to say that between 50 and 70 billion records have been stolen. Wow. That's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. That is About a lot. 30 billion just in 2020, right? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's getting worse. It's not getting any better. So ultimately as a consumer who is a victim of all of these data breaches, it is your job to pay close attention to all of your accounts, every single one of them, every single one, to look for any inaccuracies, any movement of funds, any compromise of any kind. And it's up to you to report any you know, inconsistencies with your accounts to whatever entity that that might be. Look for new accounts that are opened up under your name using your social security number. So looking at your credit reports, looking for unauthorized new accounts and uh, making sure that your various accounts are frozen. And what that means, like as far as your identity is concerned, um, your social security number really is the key to the kingdom as far as a bad guy opening up new accounts under your name. And it's up to you to freeze your credit so a bad guy can't use your social to open up new accounts under your name. So, you know, you ultimately, me, you know, us citizens, we are ultimately responsible for our security. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot rely on a government agency or a company. It is fundamentally up to us. And so what we're talking about right now is like what the problem is mm -hmm. and ultimately what you as a consumer need to do to make sure that your data is monitored, is protected as it can be, but ultimately is is somewhat useless to the thief. Like there's mm -hmm. ways to go about that. So how does one go about putting a credit freeze on their credit? Yeah, so um, a credit freeze has been around since February of 2008, okay? So 13 mm -hmm. years. I've had my credit frozen since February of 2008. As, as soon as it was available, mm -hmm. I did it the first week, okay? And I've been telling my clients, you know, all along, do the exact same thing. Do it now. And this process is one that uh, you set up through the three major credit bureaus. And they are TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, okay? So mm -hmm. the easiest way to go about this is to go online, go to the web. I mean, you're on the web right now if you're watching this, right? Yeah. 
And so you search, the simplest way to do it is to search the term credit freeze and then Experian. And then another search, credit freeze, Equifax, credit freeze, TransUnion. And in each of these searches, you're gonna get to the page on TransUnion, Equifax, Experian's website, the, the, the page mm -hmm. that allows you and facilitates the process of opening up an account at each of the credit bureaus for free. And you go through all the various prompts and fill out the information and uh, essentially give them your data. I mean, they already have it, right? They already mm -hmm. have social. They already know who you are. It's just a matter of initiating and establishing an account with each of these credit bureaus. And from there, uh, you now have a dashboard. You have a login. You have an account at the credit bureau. So you can go in at any given point in time and freeze and unfreeze your credit. Well, good. Yeah, and it seems like as technology expands, you know, there's more and more ways that uh, that I guess that industry is really trying is finding ways to scam people. I mean, I remember an an email that I got, which is just a general rule that if I don't recognize where it's coming from, then I'm I'm not clicking on anything, and I haven't really had any issues there. But I had one that, that I I felt like this was actually a really intuitive uh, scammer. They sent it from what looked like Amazon, saying that there was something wrong with my delivery. So it said that, you know, there was an issues with my delivery and my wife orders stuff without me knowing. So I, what am I supposed to know? Right. But when I looked at the domain name, it was amzn.com, not amazon.com. And that was like, Oh, okay. So then I got out of my email, went into my actual Amazon uh, account and there was nothing in there that was anything wrong with any type of delivery. Uh, and so that I felt was actually a pretty sneaky way of doing things. So let's talk, and that, that's basically phishing is what they were doing at that point, right? Yeah. Is there ways that uh, people can protect themselves from that? So studies show that cybercrime will be the third largest economy by the end of 2021. But it is up to you to ultimately recognize that you may be at risk, that there this inbound communication, whether it's the phone or email or even U.S. Postal for that matter, could be fraudulent. And you have to scrutinize every single time that somebody is trying to get you to pay money, to wire funds, to react or respond to whatever communication that might be that's getting your blood boiling or getting your, you know, your blood pressure up or whatever the case may be you always have to be aware. As always, if you want more information on, on uh, retirement, um, our contact information and calendar link is going to be in the description. And don't forget to smash the notification bell, hit that, uh, actually, no, smash the, the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell in that order. That's kind of how you want to do that, right? Um, that way you can make sure to stay updated every single week on new content to help your retirement. And we also have another YouTube channel, um, for a podcast called the Retirement Rescue Radio, where we dive deeper into a lot of these top topics in a lot more long format style. Uh, once again, just trying to bring you enough content to educate yourself so that you can live the retirement that you deserve. So take care and we'll see you next week.